We're here in Greeley, Colorado with Ken Buck, the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. The central charge that Democrats are making against you right now is that you embraced the Tea Party to win the Republican nomination, but now you're flip-flopping on some issues, on things like support for the 17th Amendment, on whether you are in fact part of the Tea Party or not, to hide your views in the general election. What do you say about that? Uh, nonsense. Um, I, I uh, talked about the 17th Amendment the next morning. I called the gentleman and said, um, I don't uh, uh, think we should repeal the 17th Amendment uh, 15 times on the record uh, during the uh, 18 months that I was running uh, for the primary. I uh, talked about the fact that I was opposed to uh, repealing the 17th Amendment. They are creating something to make sure that they do not have to deal with the issues that the people of Colorado want to hear about, and, and those issues are jobs and the economy uh, and spending. And, and they continue to try to play in another sandbox, and, and eventually they're going to have to play in that sandbox. But what about the broader issue, aside from the 17th Amendment, the idea that uh, uh, you're a Tea Party uh, uh, exponent, but you don't want to admit that in the general election. Oh, I'm admitting. <laughs> I'm happy to admit it. You know, the Tea Party gave me a lot of support, um, as did the 912 groups and the Liberty groups and, and other groups. Uh, we really had a grassroots campaign. It's been on all of our literature. It's been on all of our signs. And, and I continue to talk about how uh, Ken Buck is the grassroots candidate, not the D.C. establishment candidate. And, and Michael Bennett fits into that D.C. establishment um, uh, framework very well. And, and we will continue to run as the grassroots anti-establishment candidate. Uh, Many Republicans are opposed and have uh, pushed for repeal of the president's health care law, and some have said it's unconstitutional to mandate that people buy coverage. Uh, do you have any doubts about the constitutionality of the Social Security program? I have doubts. It'll be interesting to see what the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately does with it. Um, uh, it it's hard to predict that, but I, I have some doubts with the individual mandate. Uh, I think it's a bad policy to force people to buy uh, health insurance. Um, and, but and you also have doubts about the constitutionality of Social Security? No, I do not. No. No, and, and I've never said that, and, and I, I, I hope people look at the entire answer to the question. I, I don't have doubts about Social Security. To me, it is clear that uh, the Social Security program is constitutional, whether it is being run... It mandates participation. Um, it, it mandates uh, participation. So what's the difference? Well, I, I think that... Um, uh, it mandates participation if you work. It doesn't mandate participation for just living in this country, and the health care program does. Uh, let's talk about your um, uh, proposal going forward to uh, help deal with debt and deficits. On Social Security, you've said that you're in favor of raising the retirement age and uh, looking at uh, private accounts. Is that right? No, it's not right. What I've said is that um, we should look at uh, workers in, in three uh, groups. The first group are folks that are in retirement right now or close to retirement. And I think that we have made a sacred promise to them. They have paid in, uh, they have an expectation, and they have relied on, on that expectation in, in forming their retirement plan. And we should not touch where those folks are right now. There's a group of workers in the middle who I believe um, we need to look at things like indexing the retirement age to life expectancy. We need to look at- So uh, that would mean raising the retirement age? That's, that's correct. That's correct. We need to look at, but not for everybody. I want to make sure that that's, that's clear. Uh, we need to look at uh, means testing for that group. And then for the uh, youngest workers uh, entering the workforce or, or just having entered the workforce, I think we need to look at something that's going to sustain uh, Social Security and make sure that they have a program that's, that's available to them. Private accounts? Uh, but what I would do is I call it Social Security Plus. We have a Social Security system in place. They are part of that Social Security system. They are given a, a tax incentive to set up a 401k type plan and a private account that they would be able to invest in certain uh, government approved programs. So not using the payroll tax then? Not using the payroll tax. Um, and, and so that would be the plus end of it. So there's still a safety net, but there is an incentive for folks to, to plan for their retirement at an early age. The um, uh, Paul Ryan, Republican, uh, ranking Republican on the Budget Committee in the House, has proposed as part of his plan to bring down debts, uh, debt and deficits over the long term, uh, a plan to turn Medicare into a voucher system. You agree with Paul Ryan on that? I don't. Uh, I, I, I haven't. Uh, I, what I know is we've made promises to folks in Medicare. We need to cut spending on a lot of government programs to make sure that we can keep those promises. I haven't uh, decided whether um, some form of vouchers works or not. My, my, uh, reaction, Might work. my reaction is it probably won't, uh, and it probably won't be accepted by the American public. And, and so we've got to find some other alternatives. But you're not ruling out vouchers. It sounds like your concern is partly about the political practicality, not necessarily in principle. Well, 
um, I want to make sure that seniors have a, a medical um, uh, care system in place. And, and I'm not convinced at this point that vouchers will, will replace uh, Medicare on a one-to-one -one basis. I think it will be something less, and I think we've got to be careful um, with that. But you take a look at it. Would take I, a look at vouchers. I, I'm sure I'll look at everything, um, but but like I said, I, I don't think that it is uh, something that is uh, going to replace what we have right now, and that's the key uh, key for me. The um, Bush tax cuts expire at the end of the year. The president says he wants to uh, extend the tax cuts for 98 percent of the American people who make uh, under $250,000 in family income, uh, but not for the people who make more than that because we can't afford it. That that's the only way to bring the deficit down is to have some more revenue, and that's a place to look. What's yeah. wrong with that? Uh, what's wrong with it is the president hasn't cared about the deficit up to this point, and, and nor have the members like Michael Bennett, who have supported the president's proposals, like uh, the, the uh, bailouts of the auto companies and the banks, the uh, stimulus plan, other plans. So um, I, I think that he is once again playing a class warfare game that, that um, is, uh, I, I think, unfortunate that he's playing at this point in time with an election pending. Uh, the, the folks that make more than 250000 are often uh, the, the uh, employers of, uh, in small businesses, and we need to make sure that those folks have certainty that they uh, are not getting a tax increase, because that's really what it is. People talk about extending the Bush tax cuts. It is a tax increase for those uh, that are going to have, uh, have to pay more. The um, Obama administration, as you know, has a commission looking into uh, how to bring down deficits and also how to reform the tax system. Uh, one of the options that they're considering is moving from income-based taxes to consumption taxes, sales tax, VAT, whatever. Do you, you think that's a good idea, to I, move toward consumption taxes? I, I think the, a VAT is a bad idea. Um, uh, in some ways, uh, a consumption tax, a national sales tax makes some sense, but I, I would be very concerned that... Uh, like th the fair tax? Well, I, I am not a fair tax proponent. I think we need to simplify the income tax code. Um, as the way to go and not adopt a fair tax. But I think that um, if, if we move towards a fair tax, if we move towards a national sales tax, we have to make sure that we do away with the income tax, that we don't have just more taxes in place um, in, in two different ways. But if you can, if you could do away with the income tax, would it be better for the economy and for the American people to go to a sales tax? Uh, there would be some benefits. One of the benefits is uh, our competition in the international uh, trade. Um, the uh, corporate income tax in particular is uh, a, a tax that puts American corporations at a disadvantage. I think we lose jobs uh, to overseas when we do that. Uh, so there are some advantages to a national sales tax. I think it is a, a, a very complicated issue in how to transition from an income tax to a sales tax. I think the better answer is for us to stay with an income tax and simplify it. But it sounds like, again, your concern is more practicality that, that in principle, as a policy, you think it would be better. Uh, no, I've never said I think it would be better. I think it would be better to simplify the tax code. Um, you've said you want to repeal the health care bill. Uh, that the Obama administration pushed through. Would you also repeal the financial regulation bill that recently passed? Um, I, I, I wouldn't uh, repeal the financial regulation bill wholesale. I think there are parts of it that make sense. The, the, the problem I had with the, the health care bill is twofold. One, I think it was passed in a way that didn't give Americans the confidence that uh, the Congress was really acting in their best interests. And secondly, uh, I think it put a lot of regulations and really um, manipulated the market by having a centralized health care system. So I, I, I think we should repair, repeal a health care bill. I think we should start again. And I don't mean to say that we should ignore the problem. We should really start and we should really address the problems and we should have an open debate and we should encourage both sides of the aisle um, in the debate, something that I didn't see last time. But what's wrong with the financial regulation? Bill. What's wrong with it? It yeah. doesn't address the key issues of, of Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac. It doesn't. Um, it creates a new agency that is, uh, in, 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 as, I, as far as I see it right now, doesn't have a. But isn't that an argument for passing legislation on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, not repealing the well, stuff that got passed? Well, and I said I yeah. wouldn't be in favor of repealing hmm. the Financial Reform Act, but I would be in favor of amending it. And those were some of the amendments that I would I would look at. Um, you've got problems, obviously, with the uh, way the president use government to intervene in the economy and spending, uh, putting money into General Motors. Do you have the same problem with the way the Federal Reserve uh, inserted itself into trying to lift the economy? Uh, and do you have problems with how Ben Bernanke's conducted himself as the Fed chair? 
I think that it is important to audit the Fed and to be able to answer those questions. I'm not going to draw the conclusions to uh, the audit until we've had an audit and we've been able to look at where did the money go in TARP and, and, and what other uh, uh, moves did the Fed make um, in, in late 2008 and 2009. Any concern, as some defenders of the Fed have said, that audits would uh, erode the independence, traditional independence of the Fed? I don't think that's true. I think transparency is an important um, concept in American politics, and, and I'm in favor of it. And I think that uh, we have transparency uh, to an extent with the CIA. We have transparency to an extent with the military. We should have more transparency with the Fed. Uh, on Bernanke himself, though, should he be replaced? Um, I, I think there are better qualified people. I, I'm not going to name any right now, but um, I think that uh, time will tell whether he has really moved this economy in, in the right direction. You'd like to see somebody else in that job. Trade is an issue that there's a lot of concern about in the grassroots, especially with unemployment so high. Uh, do you think NAFTA was a mistake, and should the United States pull out of NAFTA? No, I don't think NAFTA was a mistake. Why not? Well, I, I think I am a free trade uh, person. I think that we need to have um, as open markets as we can. Um, do other countries allow us the same access that we allow them? In my opinion, no. But uh, we have to work with other countries to achieve free trade and, and not strike down free trade agreements. I was talking to a Republican Senate candidate in another state, also embraced by some of the Tea Parties, who complained about how business has approached the immigration issue. Uh, I know there's been controversy about whether or not you do or don't support the Arizona immigration law. Uh, but his complaint was that business is using illegal immigration to drive down wages and hurt the American worker. Does that bother you as well? Um, I, I, I don't see, it, it sounds, your question sounds like there's some kind of grand conspiracy among business to do that. I think that is the net effect of uh, illegal immigration. I don't think that uh, there are a group of business people sitting around and, and making that calculation. But do you think that Immigration is good for the U.S. economy or not good for the U.S. economy? Immigration is essential for the U.S. economy. Illegal immigration is wrong. Um, two more issues, or uh, one more issue before I let you go. Energy. Uh, you're opposed to the cap and trade uh, uh, plan that the president has pushed. Um, in Colorado, they've approached the issue with uh, renewable portfolio standards. And when those standards were passed, utilities exceeded the requirements so, so that they've been tightened a couple of times. Doesn't that show that if you send signals to the market about things that you want to encourage and discourage, that business will adapt and it won't hurt the economy? Yeah, I, I don't know that we can draw the conclusion at this point that it hasn't hurt the economy. I think that um, in, in the long run, manipulating the, the market as they have done is going to increase energy costs and hurt Colorado's economy. So you think what Colorado has done on portfolio standards with utilities has hurt the economy, will hurt the economy? I think it will hurt the economy ultimately. I think that we need to have a free market approach towards energy and I think that uh, we need to stop picking winners and losers in that marketplace and, and I think that setting environmental standards is one thing and having uh, different energy sources achieve those uh, standards is, is great, but when you start picking them and, and demanding that uh, at least 10 percent or 20 percent or 25 percent of energy uh, comes through uh, renewable sources, um, I think that's wrong. Does that mean you don't want government to do anything about the issue of climate change? No. Uh, one, I want to know what the science is on climate change. In my opinion... You don't believe it? I, I believe... Uh, I don't believe that the science is settled on, on man-made climate change, different than climate change. Um, on man-made climate change. And so uh, while I live in Colorado, well, you see where I live, I love the environment, um, and, and I want to make sure we do everything we can to protect the environment. I don't want government to put artificial standards on, on us. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm not an environmentalist, because I am. I believe strongly in conservation and, and the environment. The um, uh, president says green jobs are one of the keys to our economic future. Is that baloney? Uh, I don't think it's baloney. Um, I, I think that they are uh, an important part of our future if they are economically viable. I think the key is we've got abundant uh, fossil fuel resources in, in uh, America. Uh, we should stop uh, the, the uh, importation of fossil fuels, particularly oil, for a lot of reasons. Um, but the, uh, uh, the green economy certainly has a role in, in the future of this country. Ken Buck, thanks for being with us. Thank you.